Hello everyone, welcome. I have a really fun technique to show you in this video as well as some beautiful new products from Scrappy Tells Crafts. I'm going to be using their Whimsical Layering Daisies and this is a standalone set. It has all of the stems and all sizes of flowers as well as the centers for the flowers. And my sentiments are coming from this stamp set, it's called Oops a Daisy. This stamp set is a must have in my opinion. I adore all of the sentiments in this set. And I'm going to make three cards using three different sentiments with the layering daisies. The images in this stamp set are just beautiful as well. But let's open up these metal dies. I'll pull out my wire snips and give you a close up look at these dies. I'll pull them off the packaging and I do like to store them in the packaging when I'm done using them. Most of these you can just bend back and forth and they come apart, but some of them I'm just going to snip apart. And once I get them all separated, I'll speed up this video here, but once I get them all separated, I do like to hold them over a trash can and snip off the metal pieces that stick out so I don't stab myself with the wire. But here they all are and you get so many. And they're all different perspectives. So it's a really fun set, very clever. I'll pick them up with my Spellbinders diamond. It's how I like to store them while I'm working with different dyes. And I'm also going to be using some Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. This is a really thick paper and it has some beautiful texture to it. But I'm going to cut this panel in half and do some fun watercoloring. So it doesn't matter what watercolors you have, pull them out. This is a little set from Prima. Very inexpensive, it cost me like $19. And this is a collection of like, this is from three different sets and I just kind of consolidated them. Most of the colors I'm using come from the set called The Tropicals. It's my favorite of the Prima collection. And look at these delicious, beautiful colors. I'm very impressed with these because they're very inexpensive, but just gorgeous. So we're gonna just do some mindless, fun watercoloring. And that's what's so great about this technique. You don't have to be careful. You just have to put color down on your watercolor paper. I'm going to keep my dyes next to me so I can kind of get an image of where I want my lights and darks to be. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. So you can start out by wetting down the paper first if you'd like. There's several different ways to do this. I'll wet a swatch down and show you. It's just fun to watch the watercolors move on this paper. And it takes a lot of water, so it's a nice paper. It's not going to break apart on you. I'm just looking at my swatches here and deciding which ones I want to use first. But I'm going to go for the light purple first. It's really fun to watch the paint feather out and move around. And I'm going to come in with a darker purple. But I'm going to cover most of this paper up with color. And here's the darker purple. And there's really no rhyme or reason to how I'm doing this, but I do want lots of lights and darks within the color. I don't even care if I get hard lines, that looks pretty too. Now I'm putting down some greens. Again, I'm using a dark and a light. This time I did not wet the paper first. I'm just putting a very wet brush down with paint on it. Now for some yellows with a little tinge of orange in it. And I'm trying to get lots of little sections of color. I do come back over it again with a second layer. But the more splotchy it is, the better this is going to work out. I couldn't help but use some of the pretty pinks. So I pulled out another piece of paper. I'm going to put pink down as well as some teal. And again, two colors for these. I allowed them to air dry, but you could use your heat tool to quickly dry them. Now we're going to cut out the, our dies. So I'm just going to put them on the paper and see where I want them to cut out. I do end up cutting these different colors into strips. It's just more manageable that way to run it through the die cut machine. And then I'll cut out a few stems with the green. 
and I'm trying to use every little space of paint. We'll stop there for a minute and I'm going to stamp out my sentiments. I'm using three different sentiments. And I'll stamp them out on another piece of watercolor paper. This will serve to coordinate really well with the flowers. I'm using some Versafine Onyx black ink to do this. I stamped them up several times because this paper is so textured. I'll pour over some clear embossing powder and I'm just gonna catch it with that piece of scrap paper you see there. I'll tap off the excess and then I can melt, melt the embossing powder. The first sentiment there, it says, you make my, and I'm going to stamp out Daisy under it. And I'll stamp it out and then I'll pour over some more clear embossing powder and melt that. But the sentiments say, not a daisy goes by that I don't think of you, and oops a daisy, I forgot your birthday. <laughs> I just love these. Here are my panels I'm going to be using. These are all from Spellbinders. And I love this corrugated paper right here that you see. It's flat on the back, but the front is like a cardboard box. It's really neat. I love it because it's the craft color and yet it has some beautiful texture to it. I'll go ahead and attach this to my purple cardstock. And these match with the flowers that I cut out that you see there in my little heart trays. So let's put that down on the purple cardstock. And then I'm going to start adhering my purple flowers. And this was a really fun part. And these die cuts are nice because we painted them with the very heavy duty watercolor cardstock. They're very easy to glue together and to use. The centers of the daisies are going to be orange on this card. I'll just glue those into place. And look how pretty that is. So much fun. The bigger flowers I'm going to pop up with some little pieces of foam adhesive and put those down and then I can just glue the stems down flat under them. I had to lift up the flower on the right to put this stem down but I am actually going to cut this one down. I don't need the big head on it but I want the length so I'm just going to cut that out into a strip. Then I can add little dabs of glue behind it and glue them down flat. And now for the centers on these two daisies. I'll just add little dabs of glue and attach those. They just complete the flowers beautifully. I also cut some of the centers out with some brown watercolors. They come in different sizes, and I like the larger ones for the larger daisies, of course. And there we go. I'm also going to add some of the smaller daisies just around the panel. I'm not going to put a stem on these. I just wanted a little more fullness to these cards. The other two cards, I, I make up a pink one and a yellow one. And I do the exact same thing, so I'm just going to be showing you how I put together one of the cards. And now for the little teeny tiny centers to go down next. But those flowers look really fun because you get lights and darks and all sorts of different hard edges. It's a really fun and fast way to use your die cuts. These were just fun to put together. Next, I'm going to work on the sentiments. I cut these out with a banner die you see here. And then this little die set comes with edges. And this particular one cuts it out so that it looks really rough on the edges. So I'm trying to give you a close up of what that looks like, but you'll see here in just a minute when I die cut it. I'm going to tape it on the edge. And then I'll run it through my mini die cut machine. I believe Tim Holtz has a deckel edge paper trimmer that you can use that would do this really fast. Or you could even just rip it and that would look really cute too. I just wanted it kind of old fashioned and 
not rough looking, but just a little distressed. So I cut them all out into rectangles. I'll go ahead and die cut the other side of this one. I use a little piece of tape just to hold that in place. This is a Tim Holtz mini die cutting machine. I've had this for years and I haven't changed the plates. It's just a little workhorse. I keep it on my desk and I just love it. Okay, so all of our sentiments are done now. Isn't that cute? I'm going to pop these up with some foam pieces and attach this to the bottom corner of the card. And then as you see, I have one little flower behind it. I'm going to use some Baker's twine to put a little bow. I'll just tie a teeny little bow, trim off the edges, and then I'll use some micro dots to attach this to the stem of this daisy. I'll just put the micro dot right on the stem and then press the bow into it, and it just holds it fast. I attached all of my cards to white card bases, and here is a close-up look at all three cards. They were so much fun. I put little water droplet sequins on the front panel. I also decorated the insides using leftover daisies. And here is the pink one. I will have all of the links to the products that I used listed below. I highly encourage you to check out the Scrappy Tells website. They have some beautiful products there, just very unique. And then here is the yellow. You can see the white sequins behind the beads on these cards because it hasn't dried yet. The purple one is dry and you can see that it just dries clear. And here are all three. I had so much fun using this whimsical layering daisy set. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you all have a wonderful crafty day. Bye!